Well, I want to talk about my favorite number, which is, and I have to look at my paper here, 2,147,483,647. There's several things why it's nice. First of all, it's a prime number, and everyone knows that prime numbers are, are the best numbers. And it's just not just any prime number, it's a Mersenne prime number. Not only is it a Mersenne prime number, it's a double Mersenne prime number. We only know four of them, and this is the biggest one. So, okay, this, this sounds like we're in number file territory here. What, why is this computer file then? Well, there's two reasons. First, there's a, a little reason. Um, I do computer security, and everyone knows that prime numbers play a role in, uh, in certain encryption schemes and, and other cryptographic protocols. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Maybe next time I'll talk about RSA, where it's particularly relevant. Uh, but today, the reason that this number is relevant is because it is the largest signed integer. So this number has a binary representation. And I can write down the binary representation, but I think it is actually enough if I tell you the binary representation. It is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. I'm not going to do all the ones, there's 31 of them, 31 ones. And some of you might recognize that that's very close to a special number, 32. Um, so why, why is this relevant? A computer doesn't understand anything other than a zero or a one, on or off. So if you want to write down a number like two or three or four, you're going to have to represent it differently using zeros and ones. Now I'm sure that most viewers that have watched other computer file videos are aware of binary encoding. Um, but we don't only want to encode numbers this way, we also have to encode the sign. Half the numbers you want to encode will be positive numbers, or zero, and the other half will be negative numbers. So what we do is we use the first bit to say whether it's negative or not. So if it's zero, it's a positive number, or zero. If the first bit is a one, then we're talking about a negative number. This number is going to be a lot more relevant about 18 years from now and I'll tell you why um, but first we have to talk about something completely different which is the way Unix keeps track of time. Unix changed the world. It changed the world initially to be fair for computer scientists. The Unix keeps track of time by counting the number of seconds since a special date in history. Now, it's not particularly special, it's not the moon landing or anything like that, it's just one that was chosen because it's easy. It is um, 1970, the 1st of January, and then 0 hours, 0 minutes, 0 seconds, uh, UTC. So for time, why do we need signed integers though? Because time just keeps up going up and up and up, right? That's right. Uh, I just mentioned the moon landing, um, and if you want to represent the moon landing in your system, you're going to have to tell the computer this is before 1970. So you're going to have to use a negative number, and that's why they use signed integers. If in 1972, when they introduced uh, the, the epoch, uh, they wanted to talk about five years ago, you wanted to do plus two years, whatever that is in seconds, minus five years, whatever that is in seconds, and get a valid time. So that's why they decided to use um, signed integers. The uh, 1970, 1st of January, is called the Unix epoch. So if you decide to represent time as an unsigned 32-bit integer, uh, the biggest time in seconds you can represent is roughly 2 billion seconds. If you translate this into years and months and days, you know, a format that a human understands instead of a computer, the date you get is the 19th of January 2038 at around 3.14 a.m. and 8 seconds. So pi, pi o'clock. It is actually quite close to pi o'clock. I didn't, meant, I didn't, uh, I didn't see that. Um, <laughs> there's nothing deep there going on, I'm pretty sure, um, but you never know. Um, so at that time, what will happen to any system that is using this way to represent time is that one second later, the bit will go from the maximum unsigned integer. So in other words, from 31 ones and one zero in front, it will add a one and those of you that have watched the video about two's complement will know that the next number will be one followed by 31 zeros, which means minus the biggest number. In other words, it means approximately minus two billion seconds, starting from 1970. If we go roughly two billion seconds before Epoch, we will go to Friday the 13th December 1901. 
So that means that any device which is keeping track of time in that way will get really confused and we basically get the millennium bug all over again. There must be a way of fixing this. Are people working on it already? Yes, there are people working on it. For those of you old enough to remember actively the millennium bug, there was a lot of hype surrounding it and in the end no systems crashed. But that doesn't mean the problem wasn't real. There were a lot of people that worked hard and fixed the bugs and fortunately they managed to catch uh, nearly all of them. Uh, the same thing will happen um, with the Unix Epoch. All the systems that are running uh, on 32-bit integers will be patched and the solution is kind of obvious. We need to use bigger numbers. Um, so the, the obvious switch is to use 64-bit numbers. Okay, and most systems these days are 64-bit, right? Or the new ones that are coming out? Yeah, but even 32-bit uh, systems can understand 64-bit uh, integers. You just need to use some tricks to do it. Um, so it's not a, a limitation of the system, it was just done back in the day uh, because memory was a lot more expensive back then than it was now. Computations were a lot more expensive. Um, so they didn't want to use any more bits than strictly necessary. Uh, nowadays we're swimming in bits, uh, so 64, um, you know, it may sound like 64, why did we only double it? Why didn't we take more? Well, 64 bits actually gives you quite a bit of extra time to work on the next millennium problem. You want to take a guess how long it takes uh, before we run out of 64 bits? Well, I, I sense the trap is it's easy to think you're just doubling the number, but actually it's kind of like some kind of exponential crazy yes, thing, yes. right? Yes, you, yes. You've avoided the trick. Um, I will tell you when uh, we will run out of 64-bit unsigned integers. It will happen on the 4th of December, around 3.30 p.m., eight seconds past that, um, in the year 29, 22, 77, 0 to 6596. Uh, so I think most systems will, will be patched by the time that date comes around. <laughs> Believe it or not, that now magically gets rid of the two zeros problem, just by shifting the range. And if you like, this is the um, fundamental piece of magic, which I think we can do over here. Just consider... Zero, 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 plus zero. I'm now 